Hello and welcome to Lucky Sweetheart Vintage, where kitsch comes to play and fabulous finds are around every corner. So if you've seen the thumbnail, today is all about one of my favorite subjects, chalkware, woohoo, yes. Um, so I've been a fan of chalkware ever since uh, Lindsay from Mad Girls Vintage showed us a couple of the items in her collection and I've been seeking it out and I actually have a little bit of a collection going myself so I'll show you some of my stuff and in addition to that I'm going to show you some examples of what chalkware isn't so that if you're in the store and you're looking at it you can see that it isn't certain things. Um, and also I'll give you a little bit of a history of what exactly chalkware is and I'll let you know the value of it just in case you do have any pieces of your own. So let's get started with this chalkware 101 video. So let me start out by just answering the question that's on a lot of your minds. What is chalkware? Okay, so chalkware is, it's an ornamental figurine and it's made out of gypsum and plaster of Paris, and it's kind of heavy, it's got some weight to it, but not a lot, and they're hollow. Chalkware figurines are hollow. But they can also be um, wall hangings, and the wall hangings are kind of heavy, um, but these two are a gypsum and plaster of Paris creation that if all of the paint was taken away, it would look like a piece of chalk. So that is what chalkware is. So history of chalkware. Um, like many other items, uh, chalkware was a cheaper version to something else. Chalkware is a cheaper ceramic. And in around the 19th century, Stratfordshire, those figurines, I'll show you some examples of it, were really popular in, um, you know, like upper class and middle class families' homes. Um, so chalkware was created as an alternative to those ceramic Stratfordshires. And I could show you a couple of uh, examples of repros of the chalkware of the 19th century. Um, that was made to look like Stratfordshire. Now, this guy is a ceramic dog made in Japan and, um, see, Japan stamp. Um, and this also would have been the more expensive thing to buy in the day because it was ceramic. Ceramic was still a lot more expensive to make. And, um... So there, there would have been chalkware versions of, of things like this as well. Part of chalkware's history is that it was um, considered carnival wear from around the 19, 1910 to around the 1940s. And that's when it kind of took on a, a new look. And this is the prime example of that new look. So it was like animals with these cartoonish looking faces and fruits and vegetables that were just made to look um, odd. So I'm just gonna give you some examples of the cartoonish stuff that was made um, as carnival wear in around the 1930s and 40s and such. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a few examples of like the older chalkware from the 1930s because as opposed to this one, which was hand painted and you see all of the little details on it, back in the 1930s, um, they would just airbrush the the figurines and uh, only kind of like do the small, the small, small, small details um, by hand. So let me show you a few examples of that. I think, I thought you'd like think that that was interesting. Right now I'm going to explain to you some of the other um, physical characteristics of chalkware and I'm going to show you examples of it. So of course we know that chalkware is either hollow when it's figural or that when it's hanging it's um, hanging not hollow and it's kind of heavier at that point. So the Chalkware is matte. It often doesn't have a finish, and um, you can see that perfectly in both of these examples. Here, it's got this kind of like pearlized look, and you can see that. I'll show you other examples of mermaids and adorable little hanging um, chalkware finishes that have that kind of pearlized look, and I have to say that that's like my favorite ever. I love that. 
So there should be something said of the religious figurines that were made of chalkware. I come from Long Island um, where you see religious figurine chalkware literally everywhere. It's a very Catholic place where I'm from. Um, I, I live in a very Catholic household, so we have a lot of these things outside of our house. Of course, right now I'm showing you some pictures of examples of it, but right here I have an example for you of a Mother Mary planter, and this one is actually made of ceramic. So I just wanted to show you, but there's perfect, really wonderful examples of Mother Mary, Jesus, the saints, everyone um, made of chalkware as well. I have these, oh my God, so cute poodle heads that I purchased at an estate sale last week. And um, they're just really adorable, really detailed, very cool looking. And I only know that these are chalkware because of the fact that I looked them up. Um, and this particular company, Boston, which is made out of England, um, is known for their uh, chalkware heads. Not just poodles, but they also do different chalkware heads, which I can insert some other examples of uh, Boston heads. But these guys are so cute, and I can't wait to put them on my wall. Um... Yeah, and this one is chipping, so you could kind of see the chalk there. But yeah, these guys are cute. <laughs> Thank you so much for paying attention. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'm going to close out by just talking about the value of chalkware. I'm going to show you some examples of different chalkware that's selling right now and the asking prices for it. I can tell you right now that I had up my um, chalkware skunk over here and I was asking 25 for this one, which isn't a crazy price, um, but I don't have that one up right now. Um, also, these parrot heads, I don't, parrot heads, these parrots, I don't have them up right now, but I had these up at one point for $35, I think. So I'll show you some other examples of what the going rate is for uh, different chalkware pieces. So uh, that's about it. Um, I really appreciate uh, you tuning in and we'll see you next time.